Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Beckman here, and today we're going to be going over Unit 6, Video 2. So we're going to be talking about right triangle trigonometry. So let's go ahead and let's just start by reviewing a couple of things um, that you probably learned in geometry, but it's probably good to, to kind of go over it a little bit. So here it says, the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, provides regulations designed to make public buildings accessible to all. Under this act, the slope of an entrance ramp designed for those with mobility disabilities must not exceed the ratio of 1 to 12. That means for every 1 unit of horizontal, for every 12 units of horizontal run, the ramp can rise or fall no more than 1 unit. So it wants us to find the length of the ramp. So to do that, we just need to do the Pythagorean theorem. So we have 1 as our a and 12 as our b. So that's 1 squared plus 12 squared is equal to x squared. So that's 1 plus 144 is equal to x squared. So x squared is equal to 1, whoops, 45. So then we're going to take the square root of both sides. And I usually tell students, when you are doing a word problem, feel free to take the square root and get a rounded answer. You do not need to write it as an exact answer or simplified radical. So then the square root of 145 is approximately 12.042 feet. Now here, it wants us to find the measure of angle A. So back in your geometry days, you learned something called SOHCAHTOA. All right, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So this right here is the angle we want to know. So I always ask myself, what do I know in reference to that angle? Well, I know the opposite and I know the adjacent. So that means I need to use tangent. So tangent of A is equal to my opposite, which is 1, over my adjacent, which is 12. So then, in order to solve these, we had to use something called the tangent inverse. And we're going to be going over more of this in depth later on this video. We're just using this as an initial example to give you an idea of what we're going to be working on today. So we're going to take the tangent inverse of 1 over 12. And when you do that, you get 4.764, and that's going to be in degrees because we're talking about an angle measure. So make sure you're paying attention to that as well. So let's take a look at this next part. Okay, so let's take a look at SOHCAHTOA. All right, so when we're looking at this, let's take a look at this chart. So we have sine is equal to opposite over adjacent. So what we're doing is if you look on the left-hand column, it's putting things into words that I am talking about. Okay, so what we're doing is we're talking about sine of angle A. So that's this angle right here. So if we're talking about this angle, the opposite is going to be the side that's sitting across from that angle. The adjacent is going to be what's touching the angle and also touching the right angle. And then the C is going to be our hypotenuse. Your hypotenuse always sits directly across from your right angle. So let's take a look at sine. So sine of A is going to be my opposite over my hypotenuse. So sine of A is going to be A over C. And then we want to look at cosine of A. Well, cosine of A is our adjacent over our hypotenuse. So that's going to be B over C. And then tangent of A is our opposite over our adjacent, which is A over B. Now, those three trigonometric functions are something that you learned in geometry. So something new that we're adding in Algebra 2 are their reciprocal functions. So everything has, every trigonometric function has reciprocal. So the reciprocal of sine is what we say as um, cosecant. All right, so the opposite of sine is cosecant, which we write as CSC. So cosecant of A is hypotenuse over opposite. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sine of A and we're going to flip it to be C over A. So know that cosecant is the same as 1 over sine of A. That's another way of writing it. But basically it's just the reciprocal. It's sine flipped on its head. Now the opposite of cosine is secant. So secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So we're going to flip that. So this is going to be C over B. Well, secant is the same as 1 over 
cosine of a. So again, we're just taking cosine and flipping it over. And last but not least, we have the reciprocal of tangent. So the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. So cotangent is going to be adjacent over opposite. So adjacent over opposite is going to be b over a. And remember that that's the same as 1 over tangent of a. So we're not going to be using the reciprocal functions a lot because a lot of what we can do, we can use just using the regular functions. But it's important that you recognize that there are those reciprocal functions and that you do know how the two correspond to each other. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at number one. So number one asks us to find the values of the six trigonometric functions for the angle theta. So that's going to be this angle right here. So before I start, I like to figure out what's my opposite, what's my adjacent, and what's my hypotenuse. So my opposite is going to be 4. My adjacent is going to be 3 because my adjacent is touching the angle and the right angle. And my hypotenuse is going to be 5. So let's take a look at this. So we want to do sine of theta. So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 4 over 5. Cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's that Sokotoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 3 over 5. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So my opposite is 4 and my adjacent is 3. So now cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So my cosecant is going to be 5 over 4 because I'm going to take my sine of theta and I'm going to flip it over. Then my cosine of theta um, the secant is going to be the reciprocal. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to flip it over. So that's going to be 5 over 3. And then my cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of my tangent of theta. So that's going to become 3 over 4. So that's your answer for number 1. Now let's take a look at number 2. So number 2 says if cosine of a is equal to 2 over 5, Find the value of tangent of a. I just feel like that was really quite large. Okay, so let's just write this out. So what I like to do when I see problems like this is to actually draw out a triangle. So I'm going to have a triangle. Okay, so let's make this my angle a right here. So cosine of a is 2 over 5. So that means my opposite is 2 and my hypotenuse is 5. Well, remember that tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, and I just screwed that up. This should be adjacent to A, so this should be 2. Okay, so my adjacent is going to be touching the angle, but I need to figure out what my opposite is. So now I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem. So 2 squared plus x squared is going to be equal to 5 squared. So then I have 4 plus x squared is equal to 5 squared. So then I get, oop, I could write what 5 squared is maybe, which is 25. So then I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, so I get that x squared is equal to 21. So taking the square root of both sides, I get that x is equal to the square root of 21. Now that's not our actual answer. We need to figure out what tangent of a is. So tangent of a is going to be equal to our opposite, which I found to be the square root of 21, over our adjacent, which was given to me, which is 2. So that's going to be our tangent of a for number 2. Now let's take a look at 3. If tangent of b is equal to 3 over 7, find sine of b. So, okay, the first thing I want to do is write the triangle. Okay, so the triangle I have here, so if this is going to be b, my 3 is my opposite, so that's going to sit opposite my b. My 7 is my adjacent, and then I'm going to need to do the Pythagorean theorem to figure out my hypotenuse. So 3 squared plus 7 squared is x squared. So 3 squared is 9, and 7 squared is 49, and that's equal to x squared. So I get that x squared is equal to 58. So then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I get that my hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 58. So now I need to write what sine of b is going to be. Well, sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Well, my opposite is 3, and my hypotenuse is the square root of 58. So if you remember back to your geometry days and back to your algebra 1 days, you cannot leave a square root in the denominator of a fraction. Okay, so since I have this square root in the bottom, to rationalize that denominator, I'm going to take whatever square root is on the bottom, 
and I'm going to write that over itself. So when I multiply the square root of 58 over the square root of 58, that's the same as multiplying by 1. So I have a 3, and then I'm going to be multiplying that by the square root of 58. Now when I take and I multiply the square root of 51 times the square root of 51, that's just going, 51, 58, that's going to just give me 58. So 3 and 58 could be reduced, but neither of those numbers are divisible by the same thing, so that is as reduced as it gets. So that is going to be our answer for sine of B for letter 3. Now let's take a look at number 4. So number 4 wants us to solve for x. So I always like to take a look at this angle, and I think, okay, based on this angle, what do I know? Well, x is my opposite, and y is my hypotenuse. So the values that I'm concerned about are on the triangle are the opposite and the hypotenuse. So that means that I need to use sine. So what I'm going to do is take sine of that angle. So I'm going to take sine of 20. Now, tr uh, something to watch out for, those of you using graphing calculators, if you have not done trigonometry in them before, usually the graphing calculators are auto set to radians instead of degrees. So make sure you're typing this along with me to make sure you get the correct answer. If you don't, come talk to me and I can help you switch your mode to degrees. So remember that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 20 is going to be equal to my opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so now we need to solve this for x. So to do that, I need to multiply both sides by 15. So then I get that x is equal to 15 sine of 20. And at this point, you can just type this into your calculator. And when you do that, you get 5.130. So that's going to be your length for x. For a lot of these, when you're typing in degrees, you are going to get an icky decimal. So please make sure that you are being very careful of your rounding. I usually ask that students go to two or three places, but when you do that, please make sure you are rounding correctly with whatever's after it. So let's take a look at number five. It wants us to solve the triangle. So that means we want to know all of the sides and all of the angles that we don't know. Well, first, we know that a triangle needs to add up to 180 degrees. So this right angle is a 90 degree angle. So to get the angle measure of y, all I have to do is do 180. I'm actually going to write out. So angle y, maybe, it's not going to let me. Angle y is going to be equal to 180 minus 90 minus 35. So when I subtract all of those, I'm going to get 55 degrees. So that's going to be my answer for letter Y. But now I need to figure out the length of X and Z. So I'm going to start and I'm going to use X as my reference point for my angle. So for X, this X is an opposite. So I know the opposite and I know the adjacent. So that means I need to use tangent. So tangent of the angle 35 is going to be equal to my opposite, which is x, over my adjacent, which is 10. So to solve this for x, I need to multiply both sides by 10 to get rid of the fact that I'm dividing both sides by 10. So then my x is going to be equal to 10 tangent of 35 degrees. So when I type that in my calculator, I get 7.002. So that's going to be my answer for letter x. Now taking a look at letter Z. So I want to take letter Z and I'm still going to base it off of this angle of 35. So this angle of 35, I know the adjacent and I want to know the hypotenuse. So the adjacent and the hypotenuse is going to be with cosine. So I'm going to do cosine of that angle, which is cosine of 35, is equal to my adjacent over my hypotenuse. Here's a cool little trick for solving this. If your unknown is on the bottom, what you can do to solve for that unknown is you can actually flip-flop these two. So your z is going to come over here, and then you're going to do 10 divided by cosine of 35. So that, that's kind of a little math trick you can do. You could start by multiplying both sides by z and then dividing the cosine of 35 over to the other side to solve it, but I like to just remember that trick because I think it goes faster. So then in my calculator, I do 10 divided by cosine of 35. And when I do that, I get 12.21. So that's going to be my answer for Z. And now I've completely solved that triangle. Okay, so let's now take a look at number six. 
Okay, so oh, it looks like there's some extra problems that I don't have on here. So let's take a look at number six. So for number six, we have this, where it's 25 meters, and then this is 18 or 16 meters, and it wants us to find this angle right here. So I want to think, based off of that angle, what do I know? So I know the adjacent, because this is my right angle, and I know the hypotenuse. So I'm going to want to use cosine. So I'm going to have cosine of my angle that I don't know, which is cosine of x. So I'm going to have cosine of my angle is going to be equal to my adjacent over my hypotenuse. Okay, so now I know that that cosine is kind of attached to that x. So whenever we do math, we always want to think about opposites and inverses, the things that undo each other. So to undo the cosine on this side, I need to take the cosine inverse. So I'm going to take the cosine inverse of that side, and when I do that, I just get x. And then I'm going to take the cosine inverse of the other side. So x is going to be equal to the cosine inverse of 16 over 25. Well, if I were to type that in my calculator, um, a lot of them, the inverse function is located on the button directly above the cosine itself. So if you're having problems locating that cosine inverse key, please let me know. So the cosine inverse of 16 over 25. So when I do that in my calculator, I get 50.21 degrees. Again, it's important that you're calculating this along with me to make sure that your calculator is on the correct settings. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look now at number seven. All right, so for number seven, we have this right triangle. Okay, this is x degrees right here. We know 12, and then we know 10. Okay, so based off of that rect or that unknown, we know the opposite, and we know the hypotenuse. So since we know the opposite and the hypotenuse, we want to use sine. So sine of x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So in order to solve that for sine, remember to get rid of the sine, you need to do the inverse function. So we need to take the sine inverse of both sides. So x is equal to sine inverse of 10 over 12. So when I type that in my calculator, I'm going to get 56.44 degrees. So that's my answer for number 7. So let's take a look at number 8. So number 8 says, to, in order to construct a bridge, the width of the river must be determined. Suppose a stake is planted directly across the river from a second stake on the opposite side. At a distance of 50 meters to the left side, an angle of 82 degrees is measured between these two stakes. Find the width of the liver. The liver, the river. So here we have it. So here's the angle that we know. We know what is adjacent to the angle, and we want to know what is opposite of the angle. So adjacent and opposite, we're going to be using tangent. So what we're going to do is we're going to have tangent of our angle, so we're going to have tangent of 82 is equal to our opposite, which we don't know, as w, over our adjacent, which is 50. So to solve this for w, we need to multiply both sides by 50. So I get w is equal to... 50 tangent of 82, okay? So when we put that into our calculator, we end up getting 355.77 meters. So that's going to be your answer for number six. Or I guess number eight, sorry. Now let's take a look at number nine. So for number nine, it says that John found two trees directly across from each other on a canyon. Okay, so I'm actually just going to get this out of my way. I like to draw my own pictures. I am quite the artiste. So John found two trees directly across from each other in a canyon. He moved 100 feet away from the tree on his side. Okay, so here are our trees. Boop, 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 boop. And here's another tree. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so we have the two trees are across from each other. And he's going to move 100 feet, or 100 meters, 100 feet from the tree on his side, okay? So then the angle formed by the tree on his side and the tree on the other side was 70. So this is 70 degrees and that forms the right triangle. And it wants us to find the distance of the tree. So that's going to be D. 
So let's go ahead and let's calculate this out. So we know this angle. So given that angle, we want to know the opposite and we currently know the adjacent. So I'm going to use tangent because tangent deals with both of those. So tangent is going to be my opposite. So tangent of my angle, which is 70 degrees, is my opposite, which is D, over my adjacent, which is 100. So since I'm dividing both sides by 100, I need to multiply both sides by 100 to solve it. So D is going to be equal to 100 tangent of 70. So when you put that into your calculator, you get 274.75 feet. So that's going to be my answer for number 9, and that concludes your note video for today. Thanks for listening.